and the palette shifts, right? All the color that that yes. location brought into the world. Yeah. And in some ways it makes the rest of it darker because you get the contrast. Yeah. It's part of that visual storytelling that they've, that they've been so good at throughout this whole series. Yeah. So. And portraying the, the impact of the fishers. Um, this is maybe my favorite Silco episode because of his yes. humanity in that he's so worried about Jinx the whole time, but that when he's dealing with, uh, I'm going to call him trap jaw. Cause I'm not going to bother to learn the guy's name with the, the golden uh, jawbone. Uh, when he's facing a mutiny in the ranks and he just walks in like the boss he is mm -hmm. and poisons them all and he's breathing it and he's just saying, you've all gone soft. You've forgotten yep. where you're from. And it's for all of Silco's hypocrisy and evil. That's why he still falls into the magnificent bastard category of, vic of, of uh, villains because mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, I want him to lose, but God, he's so fun to watch sometimes. And he yeah. does bring people, you know, who deserve it down. You know, that it's like, you know, those guys are, they are, they're a bunch of pricks. Mm -hmm. and, and Silco, while he has so many flaws, still has virtues. And that's something I love about this show is that everyone, you know, it's like, oh, you just want to hate him and write him off. Everyone has humanity. Yeah. And this, uh, even Savika, we'll get to in a minute, shows some real humanity in this episode. I there love her now. <laughs> <laughs> there may have been hints before, but this was the first episode where I realized that Silco, that the folks in Piltover have to deal with council and and have to do politics, that down below in Zon, there is also a council. <laughs> yeah, there's like a shadow council. <laughs> yeah, just a little more... Uh, little more likely to go lethal yeah, <laughs> you yeah. can't come to a a, a talkie agreement and, um and yeah plenty no, I, of other shows and and fiction have have done that baddies being baddies to each other in a council before but it it worked really well yeah well and part of the reason i think it worked really well again is because of the visual element there was so much symmetry between the um, you know, the, the Shadow Council's chambers and the Piltover Council's chambers. And like their table was the same shape, right? Like yeah, the, yeah. Um, you know, the, the way in which the camera moved to each of the faces was was the same, you know what I mean? And I just, um, I don't know, I, I, I thought it was very cool. Actually, I want to put out a contradiction. Uh, the Piltover Council has by default the windows are closed and it is dark with only artificial lighting hmm. zon council is in a freaking arboretum with glass yeah. roof and plants everywhere the aesthetics in which they surround themselves the austere cleanliness and clean lines of the piltover console versus the deeply organic look of the zon console is interesting yeah no i agree i agree and i thought that that was very uh... I thought the I thought the Zon Council Room was very beautiful because it had that whole Art Nouveau aesthetic to it, but I want to say that wasn't there also I don't know maybe I'm imagining it was was there a scene where they closed the windows of the Piltover Council earlier in the in the series or did I imagine that? Well, it was definitely windows, but they keep yeah. them closed by default is what I meant. But yeah, there's definitely windows. In, in more the scenes than not, the windows are closed. But Casey, I think you're right. I think there is one scene where you have the dramatic. Yeah. yeah, because because they're starting the council. That's yep. that's kind of what I was thinking of when they did that one shot of the window of mm -hmm. the Zon Council, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good meeting. Yeah, no. I, I, <laughs> yes, so, I love that line. So awesome, and and the the fact that um, you know Trap Jaws just trying to subvert Savika to no avail. You know, yeah. she's smart enough to know that even if even if he's off his game. Silco still way more dangerous than any of those twats. Okay, I have another. I have another like thought. Go ahead. You know how I'm making predictions throughout this. Yeah, yeah. Um, is Savika Scorch's daughter? Who? Savika. I is know she who is. Is she? Uh, is his name Scorched? Or no, Scorched. Oh, Singe, the scientist. Singe, the scientist. Oh. Is oh. that his kid? Savika is not a game character that is not a part. Like, it is possible they yeah. might have done that. We know he has a daughter. We know they don't get it. They, that she doesn't. Maybe. 
Yeah. yeah. She doesn't have much in common with her father. Singe said he once had a daughter. Had yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the connection, I mean, they both have ties, obviously, to um, to Silco. So yeah. it's at least possible. Um, 